Hi, AP Bio. Welcome to Thursday, April 2nd um, of your online learning. Today we're going to continue talking about meiosis. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and uh, share the screen with you for, okay. So uh, just reminding you, use your RenWeb Ren Web account. Man, that word. Um, Make sure you're uh, watching your Bozeman YouTube video, watching my YouTube video, and attending the live question and answer session from 3 to 3.25. Make sure you're there. The only reason you shouldn't be there is if there's a technology problem, because we will be answering questions and then doing some assessment to make sure we're understanding things that we would do in the classroom that I can't do here, because I'm, again, talking to my friend, the green dot. Okay, so complete any assignments in that's list that are listed in RenWeb and upload them to the Google Classroom. Email me if you need any help. Okay, so again, a reminder: the Bozeman YouTube notes. Find the video link in the Ren in RenWeb. Photo of the YouTube notes of the Google Classroom, and they're due by the YouTube or sorry, the Q and A each day. All right, the materials you'll need, extra paper to write down the answers to the questions, uh, have your Bozeman YouTube notes there so you can add anything to them. Colored pencil, pencils, colored pens, pencils, highlighters are, are a good idea. Okay, so meiosis. So we've gone through um, stage one of meiosis where it's the reduction division where we're, we're going pretty much from diploid to haploid. Remember counting the chromosome numbers, the centromeres. And so what we're doing in meiosis one is we're separating the homologs. So um, remember the homologs are um, chromosomes with the same gene information. And I get one from mom, one from dad, and we're separating those. So we're separating centromeres. So we're reducing the number of chromosomes. So we've reduced it, but now we're stuck here. And so we need to do this. We need to separate into chromatids in the second phase. Well, so we've gone through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and we've done cytokinesis, so we split into two cells. The next stage you would think would start with interphase again, but in humans or in animals, we don't do interphase two. Um, we call it interkinesis, which is just the space or the time between um, telophase and cytokinesis until we get to prophase two. So um, there's, because the, there's no reason to duplicate DNA, which is what happens in interphase in the S phase of interphase, and there's no need to do that. And if we did that, we would have a bunch of problems. So it's called interkinesis. Okay, next. So let's jump into prophase two. Um, now I have prometaphase there and crossed out because um, this is the first year that we're not using the words prometaphase. So I've left it there because as freshmen, again, you had seen that, so this is where it would be. And in prophase, um, the chromosomes are um, making sure they're recondensed, uh, making sure that the spindles are there um, and the centrosomes that create the spindles are moving to the poles. Uh, everything is there, kinetic cores are there and ready to accept onto spindles so they can be moved to the middle and when metaphase comes apart. So prophase is the beginning of everything again, making sure everything is wound up, everything is being built and so on. And so here is, we're gonna say this is prophase instead of prometaphase here. So we have um, the homologs, there are the kinetic cores and they're going to be attached onto the spindle. Uh, so that's what eventually will happen. So here is prometaphase one, where my homologs attach, and here is prometaph or prophase, sorry, prophase two, where um, it's just my sister chromatids are going, hey, what do we do? And so uh, pro take out prometaphase and put prophase there. Okay, and so that leads us to metaphase two, where they're all lined up in the middle. The kinetic cores um, have, have grabbed onto spindle and the um, sister chromatids have been pulled back and forth onto the metaphase plate of the equator, and they're just hanging out waiting for the next phase. So, and then you've got those non-kinetic core spindles that you can see right here that are overlapping each other. Remember, those are going to continue to be built and push off each other to make the cell go from a circular into an oval until eventually it separates into two cells. So those non-kinetic core spindles, remember, are what push the cell apart and they're gonna be very important, especially in these phases coming. So next phase is anaphase two, and anaphase, anamnesis separates, so the sisters go boop, and they separate. 
and again, you can see in the picture that you can see um, prophase one, remember synapsis or crossing over has occurred. And so you can see the blue and the red, the red meaning what is considered mom in this illustration and blue meaning dad. And you can see that crossing over has occurred in all of these. So it's um, separating. We have two cells there because in stage one, we created two cells. So these are the two cells. Um, and so in anaphase, the sister chromatids separate. And that leads us to telophase two, um, where the now everything begins to be relaxed. Um, I, my chromosomes are going to unwind into chromatin. Um, the nucleus begins to reform around um, what's going to become two new cells. Cytokinesis is gonna to occur to um, split the cells in half. And so I am now truly, truly haploid. I've got four haploid daughter cells, two from one cell, two from the other. And so uh, I've, I'm finished. So um, boom, why don't you try answering this question, pause it and answer your question then come back. Okay, and so we're back and this, uh, because I cannot show this to you on YouTube, um, I will show this to you in the Q&A um, very quickly and then we'll talk about it. Answer this question, please. Okay, we're back. All right, let's talk about gametogenesis in humans. Okay, remember gamete is a sex cell. It's either um, egg or sperm, and genesis means the creation of. So gametogenesis is creation of egg or sperm. And remember, spermatogenesis is the creation of sperm. And so if you're male, spermatogenesis, um, you're going to go stage one, stage two, produce four sperm. Stage one, stage two, produce four sperm. Stage one, stage two, produce four sperm. Um, you're going to do that from puberty to death. And so um, you don't do that before puberty. Um, everything at puberty, it just, it just starts, okay? And so over and over and over. Girls, however, with oo genesis, yes, you remember it's oo um, we're kind of different, okay? And so uh, this picture isn't great. This is an older picture. I wanted to show it to you um, because this is what we used to think. And so the next slide, so if you, well, if you have the slides in front of you, I'd say put an X through that and write, this is the old version. Um, however, um, put your finger on the screen and go like this. No, don't do that. You'll mess up your screen. I, well, you can clean it. Go ahead. I'm waiting. All right. I don't know. <sighs> Hello, green dot. How are you today? Hmm. Pat, got your tongue? This green dot never talks back. Like I told you, it's like the zoo. You wave and wave at the dumb animals. No one ever waves back. It's very frustrating. This green dot never talks back. Stupid green dot. All right, brain break. Okay, so let's talk about spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Okay. So in spermatogenesis, like I said, boys, you're gonna go um, one cell to four cells over and over and over puberty to death. So boom, and you can see in this uh, specific slide, all of the sperm cells look different from each other because of the crossing over. And that's gonna be important. We're gonna go over that in just a minute. Okay, oogenesis. Now girls, um, now we talked about this when you were freshmen. Um, however, there's been a few changes since you were freshmen um, on where exactly um, cell division stops and starts and start, stops and starts again. So with girls, we have all the, we are born with all the eggs that we're going to need or all the cells that will become eggs that we're going to need. Um, boys, you, they're nothing. You don't have anything there. Girls, we're born with everything, which is why um, it can create problems down when you get older because you, all those eggs are that old plus one year ish. So um, it creates something called a sticky situation and literally a sticky situation, but we'll get there. Okay. So, um, while you're in utero before birth, you're going to go, you're going to go interphase one, prophase one, and stop. You're going to do the crossing over, and then you're just going to stop. Okay, no, the screen didn't freeze. I did. I knew you were wondering. Okay, probably not, but just bear with me. I'm bored. Okay, well, I'm not bored of teaching this. I'm just bored of not seeing your faces look back at me going, what is wrong with her? <laughs> I enjoy that. That's the fun part. I hope you enjoyed April Fools. I did. I hope I did. 
because I'm doing taping this before April Fools. I hope what I planned came off. So if it didn't lie to me, if it did, all right. So let's continue. So um, while you're in utero, you go through interphase one, prophase one, you do the crossing over and you stop. And so those cells are in your ovaries. So a little girl, that's what she's got going on. They're all in prophase one, just, it's just stopped and held. And then puberty hits. And then each month, one of those cells continues from prophase one onto metaphase two. So it's going to go prophase one of one cell, and then it's going to go ahead and split. And I've got two cells. One of those cells is going to be a polar body and disintegrate. The other cell is going to continue. It stops at metaphase two. They both stop at metaphase two, but this one's going to and disintegrate. This one is what's going to be ovulated. And so each month, this one cell is going to be ovulated. So it leaves the ovary and it goes into the uterus and um, it's there. If it's not fertilized, that cell in metaphase two with all the chromosomes lined up, Remember, the homologs are separated, so it's just um, a set of 1 through 23, those chromosomes sitting in the middle. Um, they're, the, if no fertilization occurs, that, um, it's not really an egg, at the same, it, that egg type thing actually is fleshed out through menstruation. If, so right here, this is where we are at ovulation. So if fertilization occurs, if there's sperm there that fertilizes it, then and only then will the cell finish meiosis. So here's the cell, the sperm gets in, the cell actually segregates the sperm's um, DNA to the side, and then the cell divides. And so if the sperm's DNA is over here, when it divides, the, um, and when anaphase occurs, the DNA goes to the side with the sperm, and there's going to be an unequal divide, division of that cell. It's not gonna go, whoop, whoop, I got two cells. It's going, one's gonna be bigger and one's gonna be smaller, as you can see in the picture. So I've got a big one and a small one, and this little tiny one is called a polar body. And again, just like the other one, it disintegrates. And the other bigger cell produces the baby. So why is this other cell so small? Well, it's gonna donate as many of its organelles as it can to this bigger cell and the cytoplasm to that bigger cell because you need more organelles, you need more cytoplasm to keep this giant egg alive because the only thing that that sperm donates is DNA. That's it. Doesn't donate any organelles, nothing. It just donates the DNA. So um, we'll talk about more in a second. I almost said something I didn't want to yet. So the polar body, however, so that's going to go away, but it does have the DNA. If, if it gets fertilized, um, it being so small, it doesn't have the organelle or the cytoplasm amount to produce a baby. However, sometimes there, when it divides, it doesn't divide as unequally as it's supposed to, and it gives a little bit more cytoplasm and a little bit more organelles to the polar body. And if it's big enough to have enough organelles and enough cytoplasm, if it gets fertilized, I can get a twin, a fraternal twin, which is called a polar body baby. And polar body babies, when they're in development, one is, tends to be a bigger baby than the other. And so um, if you remember the Mac twins, um, one was bigger than the other. And so we had talked about whether they were polar body twins. I don't know if they were, but we had talked about it because one was definitely bigger than the other, but that could have just been genetics as well. But it was interesting to talk about it to them because it freaked them out every time and that was always fun. Okay, so let's continue on. So um, let's talk about the sources of genetic variation, which is what's important here. Remember, if we were all clones, and this coronavirus is happening, the coronavirus, if we were all clones, if it was able to take one of us out, it had the possibility of taking all of us out. So that's not good. So that's not how God set us up. He set us up that anything sexually reproducing looked very, they were genetically varied so that it might take one of us out, but it's not necessarily gonna take all of us out. So that's why that's important. So the first way to get genetic variation is crossing over. And so it can, recombinant chromosomes, that's important because recombined or different chromosomes when, and you can see, look, you've got different chromosomes. You need to look down here. If these are four sperm, every one of these sperms is genetically different from the other. And that's important. So one way to get variation is the crossing over. The next way to get variation is something called independent assortment. And independent assortment, remember, is that they, when they line up, when the homologs line up next to each other, there's not a mom side and a dad side they line up independent, okay? And when you, we do a Punnett square, that's what we're looking at when you separate, big A comes here, little A goes there, big A goes here, little A. 
So that's what you're seeing is um, in a Punnett square, you're seeing this line up. So that's independent assortment. They line up independently. There's not a mom side and dad side, it's just all crazy. And the next way of getting um, genetic variation is random fertilization. Um, there's millions of sperm and that fertilize one egg and, and look at, and there's this picture, all those sperm around that egg, but it's only one of them that get in there and fertilize that egg. So um, when you do the math, it's about 64 trillion combinations. So that's crazy. And that's con continues variation. Then we've got, um, you need to be able to explain um, how each of these um, promote variation, how crossing over, um, random arrangement of the chromosomes, which is independent assortment, random fertilization, and then even your choice of mates is very, you don't, you know, that's why it's not good to uh, reproduce with say, with someone that's genetically close to you, like a cousin, because that doesn't promote variability and that's not good. So we'll talk about more of that specific in um, the Q and A. All right, so um, just a review of the difference between mitosis and meiosis um, somewhere. I've lost my way on my thing. Okay, so um, mitosis, they're clones of each other. Meiosis, it's variation. And then how do you get the variation? Okay, and so the purpose in mitosis is growth and repair. The purpose in meiosis is reproduction and varied reproduction. Okay, um, next. The events that are unique to meiosis one, prophase one, where synapses are crossing over occurs, metaphase one, where homologs separate, and anaphase one, or sorry, let me try this, metaphase, the pairs of homologs line up, and then anaphase one, the homologs separate. And then here's just a picture to remind you of the differences, just pictorially, of uh, differences mitosis and meiosis. Okay, and then I put it in word form, because some of you, this will, um, this is good for you. Okay, answer this question, please. So pause it and answer. Okay, we're back. All right, so this meiosis square dance, it's a great thing to rewatch. Um, I'm that sad my AP or my biology kids won't be doing this, but <sighs> okay. Mitochondrial DNA. Okay, so um, mitochondria, remember they have their own DNA. And so you only get your mitochondria from your mother because she comes with all the organelles. Remember the sperm only donates chromosomes. So I can link you back to your mother, to your grandmother on your maternal side and so on. And so mitochondrial DNA is specific to your mother. That's important. And then there is this, uh, the czar, the last czar of Russia where Anastasia, all of the, you know, the, they made a movie about Anastasia uh, where all, you know, it, the coup happened and they killed all the whole family and they couldn't find at first the body of Anastasia and they thought she left and there was this lady that came about that's and people convinced her that she was Anastasia and because she had markings like her and she had some memory of some things and um well they didn't have DNA testing then so um they convinced her that she was she met with because um I'm going to say it's incestuous ish, 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 ish of the royal families because they, they um, only breed with royal people and they all tend to be related, maybe even just distantly related, but still mitochondrial DNA wise, you can, um, well, and that's what ended up happening. You, you could trace her mitochondrial DNA back and they found that when they did the DNA testing um, on her body, you know, several um, hundreds of years later, but several years later, um, they found that she was not Anastasia. And we'll talk about more of that in the Q and A because I feel like I'm going to here because I realize I'm at the, at the point that I need to go ahead and end. Okay, so here I'm just reminding you to make sure that you can count the number chromosome numbers. Uh, we'll watch this during the Q and A. Answer this question. Answer these two questions. Okay, make sure that you can um, talk about each of these points. Um, and then if we have any questions, I'll kind of pull this slide back in and ask. Okay, and so make sure that you can go through, this is just the review of all these steps. And I don't know why, there it goes. Okay, 
those other things I meant to take out. Anyway, so um, that ends today. I'll see you from 3 to 3.25 in the Q&A. Don't forget to do your bills and notes for tomorrow called the Sardaria Cross. And so uh, that is the end of today's lesson. So I'll see you at the Q&A, guys. Bye.